Hello there, I'm Kyle, president of the UBC Game Development Club, and this will be a little tutorial to kind of show off, you know, a little bit of start programming in Unity, um, and a bit of stuff with the task list. So what I'll be doing is I'll be kind of going through the uh, task list and picking out a task and doing one. So this will kind of show you how we'll have the setup of the, the core kind of player movement code, um, and that in general. So as, as you can see, I come here, I've found this task, and I've put my name down, and I, I mentioned that I'm working on it. So, for this task, uh, we're going to have to look at what we've already got in Unity. So, you guys will see, uh, I'll either make another GitHub instruction video, or I'll have in the channel some way of how to download stuff from GitHub, and you'll find all of our code for our current Unity game. So, this is all that we've got right now, of course. We need to do a lot of work on it. But, uh, but all that we've got for images are the P for player and a G for ground kind of thing. And I've kind of put them, I have them set up like this. Uh, you'll find this scene in the scenes folder uh, once we're, we're kind of done with it. In Unity, you know, you have all these scene setups which are full of objects. Um, and this one will just kind of be generally have our player moving around and stuff like that. So, as you might notice, I've already got this thing right here called uh, Character Controller 2D.CS. This is something I've taken from a Brackies tutorial. Uh, we can take a look right here, uh, and you'll find it's got quite a lot of stuff in it. Basically, this is like a really well-tuned character controller that makes jumping around feel like a lot of fun. But it's not quite done yet. There's quite a few things we need to add, um, and add to it so that we can actually kind of use it. But uh, you can go through this. We'll end up actually probably modifying this and changing it a bit later once we, we want our character to feel a bit different. But, uh, but you'll probably notice that if you put it on your character on its own, it doesn't do anything just on its own. Uh, it does give us this really awesome move function, though, that we're going to use in order to move our character in a super cool way. So uh, that is kind of our task for today. Uh, so to get started with that, uh, looking at what we got, we've got these ground objects, all labeled image 1000. Uh, I'll change that labeling later, but um, they've got a couple couple components to it. It's got the transform, which if you've done some of the tutorials, you know is, uh, excuse me, is used for uh, its position. So if you change the X, it'll go up, left, right. This one's a bit tilted, so as you can see in the Z direction, it's got a bit of a rotation. Uh, and it's sorry. It's also got a 2D box collider. And if we click on, or for this one for example, click on Edit the Box Collider, you'll notice that you can see this green box right here that kind of shows the box collider. So I'm just going to make them fill up the whole thing. And we've got all these ground objects all with their box colliders. Um, yeah, uh, you can edit the colliders down here. Although right now it doesn't really seem like we need to. So. Going on to our project, uh, we've got same box collider, and on it I've put this 2D controller script, uh, and I've added some extra little stuff, these game objects, into it to help it work. Um, and it's also got a rigid body 2D, which means it'll fall with gravity. Uh, I also have it set so that it won't kind of tilt left to right when it does that. Um, yeah. Something else you might notice is that it's actually got two colliders on it. I'm going to move this down just to put them in a row like that. There we go. Um, it's got a box collider, so it's a bit hard to see, but if I zoom in maybe, um, which is the green box, and that's for like the head of our player. And it's also got a capsule collider. So uh, let me hit click on edit for it, and you'll kind of see it's got this green circle on the bottom. And the reason why we've done it like this is for slopes, is that if we had a box on the bottom, then it wouldn't really go up the slope, right? So the way I like to set it up is kind of have a box for the head, and a circle for the bottom. Of course, all this stuff is already done and will be on our on our GitHub repo. Um, so, what are we doing this time? Well, when I hit play, um, all the components will kind of be there, uh, and it'll fall, but it doesn't really move on the ground yet. So that's kind of what we got to add. Like I mentioned, this character controller's got a cool move function. So I'm going to make a new script for it. Let's go to new. C sharp script, and you can open up this script. Well, I'm going to title it uh, Player Move. Yep, 
I give it a second, and you can open up this script in whatever uh, text editor you so want. You could even open a, a notepad if you want. What I use, though, is uh, JetBrains Writer. You can get this for free. It's really good. Uh, you can get it for free using your uh, UBC credentials or student credentials, just as a as a student trial. But uh, but yeah, as you can see, I got this PlayerMove.cs script right here. So the first thing I want to do is I mentioned that we want to use this move function. So what I'm going to do is uh, we want to move this kind of character controller this character controller 2D and have it linked here so that we can call that move function from it. So what we'll do for that is we're going to go public uh, and then we're going to use uh, so this you know this is a class called character controller 2D. So a public character controller 2D and then we need the name which is character uh, I'm just going to call it character control. That's just that's just the name of it, right? Oh, got to end with the semicolon. And boom. So uh, next, what I think we want to do is uh, our first objective will just be to get it the player moving. Oops, the player moving left to right. We'll forget, we'll worry about jumping later. So our next move is uh, we're gonna need this kind of function to see if the player is pressing left or right and update stuff accordingly. So the way we're gonna do that is with a fancy, a nice Unity function. This function is provided in the Unity engine kind of. Um, library that we that you know you'll, it'll automatically put in the script when you make a new script. Um, but what we'll need is so let's get a, a variable for this that, that'll kind of determine what the player wants the character to do. So it'll be like our horizontal move speed. And well, why don't we call it that? So uh, I'm, I'm going to go up here say uh, this one will be a private float uh, horizontal move. That's what I'll call it. So you might be wondering, well, Kyle, why'd you put public up here and private down here? Well, pretty much this is public just because we want something outside of this script to mess with it. In this, our horizontal move, we don't want something here to, to mess with it. So anyway, um, although not really too much of a difference in particular in this case. So right here in void update, let's figure out what our horizontal move is going to be. So I'm going to say is equal to and uh, Unity has this input thing. I'm going to say input dot get axis raw. And basically, this is a function that will tell us something about like the the axis horizontal or vertical. So let's go uh, horizontal. And uh, now what this is actually going to be is if the player is pressing left, it's going to be 1. And if they're pressing right, it's going to be negative 1, or perhaps the other way around. Uh, I think it'll actually be the other way. Left will be negative 1, and right will be positive 1. And the way this is useful is that it'll tell us, is the player going left or right? And if they're pressing nothing, of course, it'll be 0. So uh, the amount that we want to move will be this 1 or negative 1 times like the player speed, I guess. Well, we don't really have the player speed yet, so why don't we make another variable for that? I'm going to make this one a public uh, float player speed. And the reason why is because uh, we're going to set this outside in our Unity editor. So I'm going to show you kind of what putting it as public does in just a second. In fact, I'll save this script and we're going to head over to Unity. Once you click on Unity, it'll take a second to compile. And we're going to click on the player. And just for now, I'm going to minimize all these these fancy sprite renderers and stuff. And I'm going to add a new script. So you can either hit add component and find the script, or you can just drag it over there. Boom, it's got our player move. Now you notice now, right here, I can set our player speed. So I'm just going to set it to like 100 for now, and we'll see, or maybe 10. We'll see if that's way too fast, way too slow or something. But, uh, but for now, that's what I'll have it at. And you'll notice, because in our script we also had this public character controller, it wants us to put it there too. But luckily, we can just kind of drag it, pop it in there, and boom. Now it has the character controller set as well. So now both of those variables are already set by the time we, we load this up. All right, so now we've got what our horizontal move is, but now we actually have to use it. So you might see here that there are some comments that say, oh, start is called right before the first frame update. So right when the object is created, it calls start. So right when... So we don't really need anything to go in there. An update is called every single frame. Well, there are more of these than just start and update 
where it'll it'll do something to the object in it. So for example, I can go void. Um, so there's one called fixed update. Oops, you know that. So fixed update. Yeah, there we go. And uh, down here. So what's fixed update gonna do? Uh, in fixed update, it's the same thing as update, except it's a bit better in terms of physics. Because instead of being called just whenever the frame updates, which will depend on the frame rate of the of the computer that's running the thing, this will just run a fixed amount of times. So it's okay that we do this every frame, because that's when it'll accept the input. But for our physics, we probably want it to be a bit, you know, a bit nicer and use the the fixed update. So what we'll kind of do now is we're gonna take our character controller up here. So character control. And I'm going to say dot move. And what we're doing is we're using this uh, the move function that that's defined here in our character controller. So right here we got you know float move, bool crouch, bool jump. Uh, and what we're going to do is this move is definitely what we want to put in there. So in fact I'm just going to put right here uh, horizontal move, and then comma. The other two. Uh, very or parameters here were the crouch and the jump, but we haven't implemented those yet, so I'm just going to go false, false. All right, so seems like we've got everything pretty much set up uh, for moving. We call that character control move function, and if we go back to our object in Unity, it's got that character control script. I'm going to move them to be right beside each other, and it's got that because it's got a rigid body. It falls, so everything should work. Let's hit, let's hit play. All right, so now uh, the the, con the keys that will move the player left and right will be A and D, and if I press D, there we go. We did go flying, so clearly I think we want more gravity, but we can move around. Uh, we're just super, super light. So of course we'll change that. Um, but currently, we got kind of the, the moving working. So if we want to make it heavier, I think the rigid body, or maybe somewhere in this controller script, will end up doing that. Uh, so let's say, for example, let's say up here, if I kind of uh, change the mass to make the mass a bit higher, and then I hit play, then when it bounces off that, it won't really go flying so hard. Yeah, a bit, so may maybe we could turn it up more, stuff like that. But, uh, but for now, I think we'll probably keep it that way. So... Now you might be wondering, well, Kyle, I, I see that you use this input get access raw horizontal magic here. Where exactly does this kind of come from? And we can kind of find that if we go to the Unity project settings. So the input kind of takes from this thing that Unity has set up called the input manager. I clicked on the wrong thing. So I'll go to uh, edit project settings. Uh, something called the input manager. And basically, this will kind of help us. It, it, it just takes out a, a middleman and helps us uh, figure out some stuff for these extra variables that Unity can can kind of help us use. So, for example, if I go down to horizontal, you'll notice that uh, we have the positive button, the negative button, all these things that'll determine left or right, determine whether the number is negative one or positive one, right? Um, and you can, set, you, you can set alternatives. You can even make your own, I think, or maybe there might be just a limited number. Oh, you can add more right here. Um, and um, you'll also notice here is one for jump. So when space is pressed, it's positive. Uh, otherwise, there's no, you know, uh, there's no negative because how do you how do you negative jump, right? But um, yeah, so it has gravity. You know, a bunch of extra kind of info here. But what we're mostly just going to use is this positive button. So let's add jumping. Why not? Um, Currently, we only jump when we when we hit this slope and go flying into the air. Uh, so let's take a look back at our script. We're going to add some jumping. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to figure out whether or not the player has kind of pressed the spacebar button. So for that, I won't need a negative one or positive one. I'll kind of just need a true or false. That's a variable that will be true if they pressed it and false if they did not. So I'm going to make another private. And this time, I'm going to set it as a bool. And I'm going to say jump. So the bool is just going to be true or false, so that's why I, I kind of chose that variable. Um, and let's figure out how to set it. So what we'll do is we're going to say if, um, and then in this case I'm going to put down the input dot uh, get button down because we you know I'm just getting whether the buttons uh, up or down. 
make sure that I have the, the stuff capitalized, right? And in this case, the button is going to be jump. Oops, I think it has to, might, it might have to be capitalized. Let's take a look at our input manager. It is capitalized. There we go. Okay, so if this is true, because like I mentioned, it's kind of a, uh, it'll be like one or zero, then uh, what we want to do, we want to set our own jump variable to, to true. So, so let's say jump is equal to true, right? Then way down here, remember when I when we went back to the character controller, we saw that this was like the crouch variable, this was like the jump one. Well, I'm just going to put our jump value right there. So if it gets changed to true, then it'll be true. Now there is an issue, is that if the jump is always true after you press the space bar, then you'll always just keep on jumping forever. So let's, uh, let's just add in a little jump is equal to false. So every kind of frame, it'll check to see if jump is true, and if it is, it'll make us jump, and afterwards it will set it back to false. If it's already still false, then, you know, nothing will change. All right, so we got our jump stuff all set up. Let's head over to Unity and see what happens when we press play. All right, pressing space, and boom, jumping like that. You might notice I also did uh, turn the speed down. So before, the speed was 10. Now it's set to, to 1. And as a result, we're, 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 we're going pretty smooth. We're sliding around. Um, yeah, and that all seems to, to work pretty well. You might be wondering, well, how does it... So you, you can't jump while you're in the air, right? How does it know whether or not you, you're on the ground? And actually, the way that it does that is through these two little objects that I have attached to the player. So they're children of the player. Um, one of them is called ceiling, and you might notice it's an empty object. It's got nothing in it but a transform, and it seems to be placed right above the player. And there's this one, the ground, that seems to be placed right below the player. Well, basically, uh, what the script kind of, or the, the, the controller 2D script kind of does, is it looks at these two objects, you might notice I have them set here as ground check and ceiling check, and sees if they're touching the ground or touching the ceiling. So the ceiling one, of course, if there was a ground above us, then we'd hit our heads and wouldn't fly through it. Um, and as you can see, it ends up working. Uh, as we press play, we can kind of jump around on our little ground, and the slope works as well. You'll notice that uh, because now the speed's lower, I don't launch into the air as I hit the side. Uh, you can change the jump for us, as you can see on the right here. Um, but next, something a bit more interesting that you might notice is that if we jump off and we fly onto the side, we kind of stop and hang onto the wall. And jumping or going down doesn't do anything. And we can even release left. I'm not even pressing left, and we don't fall. As long as we're touching the wall, we don't seem to fall. Or in that, well, now we seem to be sliding off. But um, this actually has to do with the physics material. So you notice for these colliders, there's no 2D physics material on them, and it's the same for on these boxes. So what we can do, actually, is uh, we'll put a physics 2D material on there and make our own. So let's head over to the project. I'm going to go create. I'm going to create something new. Uh, looking for 2D material. Here she is. And, uh, and now I'm going to call this Slippery. The reason why these guys, when we hit the side, we kind of slide down, but not really, is because they're so, uh, you know, they got friction. It, 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 there's friction that'll keep us from going down. Now, I'm going to keep bounciness at zero, uh, at least for now. We might want to make a bouncy platform later. Uh, but I'm going to set fric or friction to zero as well. And then I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to pop it into the box collider on the head, the box collider on the feet. And uh, now that it's got zero friction, if we hit play, and we jump off and try to grab onto the side. Oh, we'll slide right down. Now you might notice at first we didn't slide down and, uh, and that seemed a bit awkward. And the reason why was because the box got caught. So, so if I zoom in here, you'll notice these green lines. These are our two colliders, our circle and our box. Well, we actually hit the side with, it was the box, the bottom corner there was on it, but the circle wasn't. So we can fix that a little bit by, uh, if we come to our box and we edit it and we can make it just a little bit smaller. And boom. And now when we do it, we'll notice that uh, we should slide right off and there'll be no none of that business that we were running into before. 
Now, exactly how big to make it is actually up to us. Uh, we could add in even more colliders. We could add in like an extra little part there. In fact, we could make the, the head. Uh, here, let's go to the head here. Uh, we could make it a bit bigger. So this is a bit hard to see. Uh, might not be able to turn down your resolution or turn off your resolution, but uh, we can make it go down into the circle. We could even make the circle go up and have them overlap, and that shouldn't cause too many problems. Um, if they overlap, there won't be any issue. Uh, we could even add more little ones for these corners and add more box colliders. It's good to keep it at a low number for now, though, just so that we don't, you know, take up too much processing power just for our player. And with that, in general, uh, we've pretty much made the core. The only thing we're missing is a crouch. So, uh, first of all, we don't actually have a button for crouch set. So, if we go back to our project settings, find the input manager, we are going to make a new... Uh, input. So I'm going to start with the jump, and I'm going to hit duplicate array element, and now I have two jumps. I'm going to name this one crouch. And I'm also going to, instead of space, I'm going to set the positive uh, button to S. Oops, no, not left shift. Oh, no, sorry, that's... Uh, I'm messing up everything. I clicked on jump or fire by accident. So when we press S, our character will theoretically crouch. That's going to be the button. Um, and let's hop back over to our character controller. So as you noticed, this thing right here is crouch. All we got to do is put in whether or not we're crouching into that, and we're good. So I'm going to do another one of these input dot uh, get button down. And in this case, I'm going to do crouch, the crouch that we just made. And in this case, we're going to need another private bool. This one's for crouching. Some space. Uh, and I'm going to say crouch is equal to true. Now, there is a bit something is that it, it's going to be a bit different from jump, right? Because as long as we're holding down crouch, we want to keep on crouching. But in this case, it's only going to set jump, you know, once when you press jump, and then afterwards it's going to make it false. So we're actually going to up here go else. And uh, so, so, you know, if this is false, then we're going to set crouch to false. And we're going to take this crouch and put it down here. I'm just going to add a little bit here uh, right after this else, is that we don't really want this to happen all the time, because this input.get button down is only going to activate the second we press it down, or is only going to be true the second we press it. So we want this to, to be false the second we release it. So I'm going to go input.get uh, button up, and I'm going to put crouch again. And now we should be all good. Uh, when we release, it should uh, set the crouch to false. So, oh, I forgot the if part. There we are. Uh, now, if we head back to Unity uh, and we hit play, so let's give it a second to load, then we should notice that now, as we walk up to this ground, so I'm going to go up, normally holding right, can't get under that, this ground there. But if I hold S, then now all of a sudden, I move a bit slower and I'm crouching. So it doesn't seem like anything's happening, but really what's happening is this top box collider is getting deleted, so now we can stay underneath. Another thing is that if you release the crouch while you're underneath, it doesn't immediately uncrouch you and make the things combine. It uses the ceiling check to see if there's something above you, and if there isn't, so you notice as I go out, now I'm uncrouched. Uh, so might look a little bit silly right now. Crouching doesn't do anything but just lets you go through. Uh, but once we add animations that maybe crunch that or have cool crouching animations, then we'll be able to, uh, to crouch and it'll look really nice. But I think that's about it generally for, uh, for showing you the ropes on what we'll have uh, as the core of player movement. Uh, there's tons of stuff that we'll need to add. Uh, one of them will be wall jumping right? Uh, currently, when you hit a wall, you just slide off, but maybe we change that. Maybe you slide slowly, and then pressing jump again makes you fire off the side of it. There's a lot of extra stuff. Um, you'll notice that right now, the task list may be a bit empty, but uh, as we kind of complete this stuff, so now I can change this to complete, and uh, I'm also going to highlight it and make it green. You don't have to do this, but, but I, I, I like the way it looks. Um, Oh, and, oh, hey, we also finished this one. I just realized we made it jump. Uh, so, boom. Uh, we're going to replace some of these tasks, 
And uh, and once this is done, you'll also probably push it to GitHub to your to your branch on GitHub. Um, but I'll make another video kind of showing you that, or I'll just have some some instructions in the Discord. So you might be wondering, well, Kyle, how did you figure all this out? And well, truth is, got it from a another Unity 2D tutorial. So this is a tutorial by Brackies. Uh, I totally recommend checking him out. If you want to see him explain everything that I just explained, but better, then uh, you can totally check that out. Keep in mind that whenever you take on a task, uh, similarly, like any of these or, or extra stuff like that, then um, it's always a good idea to just do a quick Google search, YouTube search, see if anyone's done anything similar and how you can do it yourself. Or you can always reach out to me or the instructors in Programming Help. If you have any questions about this stuff, about what I did, why it's so weird, and uh, how any of this works, including this character 2D controller, which we'll eventually have to modify and mess with, don't be afraid to send me or one of the other coding instructors a message. You can always come here to Programming Help, and don't be afraid to send out some, uh, some messages here. So, uh, until next time, I will see you guys later. Thank you.